In this video, we're going to look at a fun leak code problem called valid parentheses. This problem is rated easy and it's on the blind 75 list. So here's the problem. We're given a string that contains open and closing parentheses, open and closing square, square brackets, and open and closing curly brackets. And the problem is to determine if the string is a valid parenthesization. Okay, so let's look at some examples to see what that means. So here's an example of a valid parenthesization. It's the concatenation of two valid parenthesizations, each one just being an uh, opening symbol followed by the closing symbol of the same type. So here's another example of a valid parenthesization. This one we can peel like an onion. The first open parenthesis is matched with the last closed parenthesis. And then after we remo remove those, then we see inside is another valid parenthesization. Again, we have a concatenation here. Uh, on the left, it's just an open and closing parenthesis. And on the right, um, an open curly bracket followed by open square bracket and then closing square bracket, closing curly bracket. So that's valid. Now let's look at a bad example. Uh, so this is a bad example because the very first character is a closing curly bracket that has no partner. So that's not a valid parenthesization. Uh, here's another bad example. So in this case, we have an open square bracket immediately followed by a closing curly bracket. And those don't match. So this is not a valid parenthesization. For those who like a more formal definition, here's the definition of what a valid parenthesization is. So this definition kind of shows how you can build up valid parenthesizations. We can start with the empty string. That's a valid parenthesization. And then from a valid parenthesization S, we can enclose S in matching symbols, opening and closing symbols, to get another valid parenthesization. And also from two valid parenthesizations, S and T, we can concatenate them together. And that's also a valid parenthesization. Okay, so how can we design an algorithm for this problem? What we're going to try to do is transform our string little by little into simpler strings such that the original is valid if and only if the subsequent strings are valid. And one way that we can do this is by removing valid substrings. So by substring here, I mean a contiguous part of the original string. So if we start with a valid, sub, uh, a valid string and we remove a valid substring, the result is still going to be valid. And conversely, if we start with an invalid string and we remove a valid substring, the result is still going to be invalid. Okay, so removing a valid substring preserves the property of being valid or invalid. So here's some examples to illustrate what I mean. In the first example, the bold red portion is a valid substring of the original. And we see that after we remove this, then we still have a valid string. On the other hand, in the second example, we have an invalid string. Uh, if I remove the bold red substring, again, that's a valid uh, substring. And after I remove that, then we see that we're left with an invalid string. Okay, so removing valid substrings preserves the, the property of being valid or invalid. And that's the idea that our algorithm is going to exploit. Okay, so we kind of want to find valid substrings so that we can remove them. Uh, and what we're going to do is just look for the simplest valid substrings possible. So the simplest valid substring is just two characters, right? An opening symbol followed by the matching closing symbol. So these are the valid substrings that we're going to look for. And by the way, if we ever find an opening symbol immediately followed by a closing symbol of a different type, we can return that the string is invalid, right? A valid string uh, cannot contain that as a substring. Okay, so here's our first algorithm. We're just going to make a pass over the string looking for an opening symbol immediately followed by a closing symbol. 
if the symbol types match, then we delete the pair and we keep going. If they don't match, then we can already return and say that the string is invalid. Okay, so we're just going to keep making passes over the string like that, uh, transforming the string, de deleting these matching pairs, uh, while the string is not empty. And if we wind up with the empty string at the end, then we return valid, because we know that the empty string is valid. Okay, so let's look at this uh, on an example. So we have this example here. So let's make uh, a pass over the string. And again, we're looking for opening symbols immediately followed by closing symbols. Okay, so there we, we come across one and they match. So I'm going to delete that pair and then we keep reading the string. So next we come across another uh, opening symbol followed by immediately followed by a closing symbol and these also match so I'm going to delete them and then we continue iterating in the new string uh, but there's no more opening symbols to read okay so now we just go back to the beginning and we just make another pass through the string so on our second pass we find the pair in green here an opening symbol followed by a closing symbol again they match so we just delete them. We keep reading the string, but no more opening symbols. So then we just start again over from the beginning. In our third pass, we find a opening symbol followed by a closing symbol. They match, so we delete them. And now we've reached the empty string, okay? So now we just return valid. Okay, and that's our first algorithm. Okay, now this algorithm can be kind of slow, right? So if we have a string like this, say this is a string of length n, which has n over two opening parens followed by n over two closing parens, uh, then on each pass through this string, we're just going to delete one pair of parens. So we're going to have to make n over two passes over this input in order to end up with the empty string and see that this input is valid. Okay, so let's try to come up with a faster algorithm now. Now, it seems wasteful to just start back at the beginning with each pass. So maybe if we somehow remember some information, we keep track of what we've seen, then we can do better. We don't have to just start over again with each pass. So what we want to do is we want the algorithm to be more dynamic. We want to be immediately be able to work on the new string that we obtain after deleting a matching pair. So to do this, we need to know what the most recently seen opening symbol is even after we delete a matching pair. Okay, so let's see how we can do this. So what we're gonna do is we're going to remember all the opening symbols that we've seen in order of most recent to least recent. Okay, so let's look at an example. So again, we just iterate over the string. Uh, every opening symbol that we see, we remember it. Okay, so uh, we see this uh, dark blue paren here. We remember that. Uh, next, we see uh, an, a light blue paren. So we're going to remember that as well. And we want to remember the opening symbols in order from most recent to least recent. So I'm going to put this light blue paren on top of my little data structure over here. Okay, the next symbol that we read is a closing symbol. So whenever we see a closing symbol, we check if it matches the most recently seen opening symbol. And that's the most recently seen opening symbol of our current string. So our current string that is after deleting the matching pairs that we've already seen. So when we check, we look at the top of our data structure and we see that indeed this matches the most recently seen opening symbol. So now we are going to remove that matching pair from our string, just like we did before, to arrive at the new string given on the right. And in the new string, so after we delete this light blue pair, the most recent opening symbol that we have read is the darker blue uh, parenthesis, right? 
So now we want this darker blue parenthesis to be in the top box of our data structure. So we're just going to remove the light blue parenthesis from our data structure. Uh, we've already deleted it from the string, so we don't need to remember it anymore. Okay, so now I've done that here. I've just removed the light blue parenthesis from our data structure. And now we're in the perfect setup, right? In our new string with the light blue parens deleted, the most recently read opening symbol is the dark blue parenthesis, which is exactly what we have at the top of our data structure. So we're in the, the perfect setup to continue the algorithm. So now we continue reading. We see another opening symbol, the green curly brace. So we're going to add that to the top of our data structure. And we can continue reading the input. Next, we see a yellow uh, opening bracket. So we put that at the top of our data structure, and we continue reading. Next, we see a closing symbol. So we check if it matches the most recent opening symbol, the one at the top of our data structure. And it does, right? They're both square brackets. So we can delete this pair from our string and remove the yellow opening bracket from our data structure. OK, so after we delete the uh, yellow square brackets from our string, we end up with a string you see on the right. And then we can remove the yellow uh, opening square bracket from our data structure. So now we're in this situation here. And you see that again, we're in the perfect setup with respect to the new string that we have after this deletion. The most recent opening symbol we have seen with respect to this new string is the green opening curly brace. And that's what we have at the top of our data structure. Okay, so now we keep reading the string. The next symbol is a uh, green uh, closing brace. So we check if that matches the opening symbol at the top of our data structure. It does, so we can delete the matching pair from our string and also remove the green curly brace from the top of our data structure. Okay, so after we do that, then our new string uh, is just this one. It's just a pair of parens. And we're still in the perfect setup, right? The top of our data structure has a blue opening parenthesis, which is the most recent opening symbol that we've seen with respect to our new string that we have here. Now we read the last symbol in our input, and it is a closing parenthesis. This matches the top element in our data structure, so we remove the blue opening uh, parenthesis from our data structure, and we remove this pair from our string. So then we arrive at the empty string, and now our data structure is also empty. So when we reach this state where the data structure is empty and we've finished the pass through the string, there are no more characters to read, then we can return that the string is valid. So this means that our sequence of removing match pairs has arrived at the empty string. Let's just summarize the algorithm here. So we kept a data structure with the most recently read opening symbol at the top. And we did, did this dynamically. So the opening symbol at the top is the most recent with respect to the current string we are considering, potentially after deleting some pairs of match symbols. When we come across a closing symbol, we check if it matches the opening symbol on the top of our data structure. If not, we return invalid. If yes, then we remove the opening symbol from the top of the data structure and continue reading. So note that we do not literally have to delete the pair from the input string, as I showed in the example. I just did that to illustrate how the algorithm works. The algorithm naturally maintains the most recent opening symbol read in the current string after the deletions at the top of our data structure. If after processing the last symbol in the string, the data structure becomes empty, then we return valid. So this algorithm just makes one pass through the input. To process each character, we just have to potentially add an element to the end of our data structure, or read and remove the last element of our data structure. So we can do this with, say, a vector. And then each of these operations 
is in constant time, or in the case of adding an element to the end of a data structure would be constant amortized time. So the total running time over processing the n characters is going to be theta of n. Let's look at the memory usage of our algorithm. So if we consider this input again, with n over 2 opening parens followed by n over 2 closing parens, then since we have n over 2 opening symbols in a row, uh, we're going to have to remember all of those. So this algorithm sometimes needs to use omega of n space. Of course, it always uses at most uh, order n space as well, because there's only n symbols in the input. So the worst case memory usage of this algorithm is theta of n. Now let's step back and view this algorithm from a more general perspective. What operations did we need to make this algorithm work? Well, we wanted a data structure where we could add elements, retrieve the most recently added element, and remove the most recently added element. These three operations define an abstract data type called a stack, and that's what we're going to look at in more detail in the next video.